Hi guys and welcome back. I thought we'll be doing some resistance work today. So all you need is just a stretchy band, a thorough band. Um, I wouldn't go for anything too heavy as we're going to be using it mostly for the arms. Nothing too light either as you don't want the band to split. So medium resistance should be good. So I'm going to set with the band behind me and then I'm just going to lay down so that I'm resting on top of the band. I'm going to wrap the band around the back of the rib cage, making sure that it's around the rib cage, not around the arm. If it's around the arm, it will roll and snap into the back of your head. So making sure that it's stuck underneath of the arm. And then in the first few reaches, I'm going to try and um, work on resistance. So I'm going to try a few pushes up and down, just trying to find that the amount of resistance that works with the arms. I should be able to lock the elbows, so I should be able to make the tricep fully engage and fully activate. But I shouldn't need to over recruit into the neck or into the jaw. So I can easily push up and then I'm just going to control down. Once that I'm happy that the tension is correct, is the right one, then I'm going to start loading at the other end of two. So connecting through the centre, the lower back is staying in neutral. I'm going to lift one leg up into tabletop. Or if I feel safe and comfortable doing so, I might pick up the other leg too. So one or both legs lifted, making sure that the load is on the belly and into the hips, not into the back. So making sure that the legs don't start hanging and they don't start curling towards you. So a good amount of load, but nothing that is straining the back. Then I'm going to <laughs> focus on the arms. I'm going to start pressing the arms up and towards the ceiling. So I'm going to exhale my way up. Inhale my way down, exhale up, inhale down, think of a little pause, control, keep the breathing going, swap the breath, inhale up, exhale down, just to finding the breath that works best for you. And then once that you're happy that you've got the breath going, then I'm going to start adding the leg. With the heel on the right foot, I'm going to tap the ground every time that the arms that reach up. So I'm going to reach up with the arms, I'm going to tap the heel of the right foot down, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to tap the heel of the right foot down, and then come back. Think of just a kiss in the mat, not resting the foot onto the mat. And then as the leg is moving, especially if your left leg is raised as well, Make sure that you don't feel that leg swinging forward and back. If you're swinging forward and back, it means that your hips are rocking. If your hips are rocking, it means that your back is extending and flexing, extending and flexing. See if I can hold that the back is still. See if I can hold the pelvis stable. Just loading that single leg. The knee staying bent at 90 degrees. So I'm not closing the knee joint. I'm not extending the knee joint. I'm keeping it at 90 degrees angle. And I'm aiming for the heel of the foot to touch the ground, not the toes. So the heel of the foot. Three. Two. One. I'm going to ease back. Swapping the legs around if you're on the single leg. So the left comes up, the right goes down, or vice versa. Adjusting the position if you're on a double raise, making sure that the center is still active. And then I'm going to try again. Pushing the arms up and towards the ceiling. The resistance that should be the correct one. I also got the triangles like mine. I'm going to start driving the arms, dropping the left heel to the ground and then controlling it back. So same as on the other side. See if you can avoid that swinging forward and back. So the movement is coming from your back, from your pelvis. I want the movement to come just from my hip joint, that left hip joint. 10, 9, again find the breath, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, One and 
releasing back, and lowering the left leg, releasing the right. If it's lifted, extending the legs away along the front of the hips or the front of the belly to have a little rest or to relax. I'm going to change the load through the upper body and the load into the legs. I'm going to pull the band out and then this time I'm going to bring it to the front of the body. I'm going to bend the knees and reset to the neutral same as before. And then first the thing, I'm going to try and again find the right resistance. So I'm going to raise the arms up. What I want is for the arm to stay straight, but I don't want to the elbow to lock. So the elbow staying soft. It's not bending, but it's not locking out. It's staying straight, but relaxed. I'm going to start pulling the band out. So I'm going to spread the arms as wide as I can as if I was trying to bring the band to the top of the chest. Then I'm going to control my way back. Too heavy, too hard, I'm going to adjust the distance between the hands and then I'm going to try that again. And then control it back. See if you can be aware, if the elbows lock, it tends to push the shoulder, wedge the shoulders into the head. See if you can think of the elbows staying soft and the shoulders keeping down and away from the head, down and away from your ears. So I've got the resistance through the arms, I'm going to reset the legs. I'm going to lift the right leg up into tabletop, Left leg if I feel safe and comfortable doing so. So same as before, one or both legs are raised. So strong connection through the centre, keeping the pelvis stable, the back still. This time as the arms are open, I'm going to extend the right leg away. As the arms close, I'm going to bring the leg back. See if you can control the return, repeating on the right side, and then controlling back. So same as you did for the drop, for the little um, half scissor. Be aware of that left leg, making sure that that left leg is not rocking forward and back with the movement. To see if I can keep the movement to just into the right hip, into the right knee joint. This time the knees extended so the leg is becoming longer, heavier to support. Same as usual, if the hip starts clicking, clonking, don't drop the leg so low or see if you can play with the angle of the hip joint. What happens if I slightly internally rotate or slightly externally rotate the leg? What happens if I bring the leg slightly across or slightly out? What happens if I centre the leg? So see if I can play with the angle of the hip and see if I can get rid of that clicking, see if I can get rid of that clonking. Three. Two, one, and release it back. Using the arms, swapping the legs around. If I'm on the single leg, I'm going to pick up my left to drop down the right. If I'm double, I'm going to make sure that the legs are still holding that sharp tabletop, and then I'm going to try again. So as the arms are open, I'm going to extend that left leg away this time. And then I'm going to control the arms and the leg back. So I'm going to stretch out the band, extend that left leg, and then I'm going to come back. Three. Four. Elbows are still soft. Five. Notice any tension into the neck. Any rocking on that right leg, if it's lifted, keep it still. See if I can adjust that clicking, that clonking. See if I can get rid of it if it's happening. Last one. And releasing back, and returning the left and lowering the right leg, extending the legs away, allowing the front of the belly, the front of the hips are to open up and to relax. I'm going to change the effort completely. So instead of working with the front of the body, I'm going to try and work from the back of the body. So I'm going to roll over onto the belly, and at this time I'm going to swing the band behind the back. <laughs> I'm going to reach with my hands 
and the knees to the band. So palms up, I'm going to slip the hands under the band and then I'm just going to clamp the band between the index and thumb. So my palms are still facing up. I'm going to reach the arms and nice and long down the side. And the first thing what I want is to connect it through the shoulder girdle. So I'm going to retract the shoulders. So I'm going to squeeze the shoulder blades together. And then I'm going to lock it through the elbows. I'm going to reach the arms. I want the band to lift off the hips just enough so that you can't feel the band touching it, touching you. The band is running slightly suspended, not too high. Then I'm going to ease back. And then I'm going to try again. I'm going to retract the shoulders. And then I'm going to reach long and then just lift the band up so slightly. And then releasing back. So see if I can get that activation through the middle of the back. Rhomboids and mid lower traps of trying to get the lats to pull the shoulders down, the little depression. If I feel that the band is in the right position, so I feel I've got a good tension there, I might want to maybe bring the hands a little bit closer together, making it a little bit harder or further apart. Entirely up to you. I'm going to start adding the thoracic spine, the upper back. So I'm going to retract the shoulders, I'm going to lock the elbows, reach and lift the band. And then reaching forward from the crown of the head, I'm going to draw the belly in tight, and then I'm going to try and lengthen away. With the arms, I'm going to keep reaching to the back. With the head, I'm going to try and reach to the front. Imagine somebody grabbing hold of your arms and pulling you backwards, encouraging a little bit more stretch across the front of the chest. There's no pain in the back. Then I'm going to ease my way back. And then I'm going to try again. So I'm going to retract the shoulders. Lock the elbows. Reach longer through the arms. And then extend through the upper back. I'm going to lift as far as I feel comfortable going and then I'm just going to ease my way back down. If I feel that the movement is quite comfortable so the back is okay with it, I feel that I can do more this time I'm going to activate the legs too. So retracting the shoulders, locking the elbows, reaching through the arms, I'm going to lengthen from the top of the head, so looking down at the mat, I'm going to reach and lift as high as I can and then pulling through the feet, I'm going to lock it through the thighs and then lifting both legs up at the same time. Then I'm going to ease my way back and then try it again. See if you can think of a slow controlled movement as the tendency here is to rush it and then going into that sudden jump. Most of the people complain that they get back ache that is very painful for the back. The sudden jump is so sudden that if you're going too far, by the time you realise that you've gone too far, it's too late. You've already compressed what you were not meant to be compressing. So think of a slow controlled movement. If I feel a bit of a niggle, then I know that I shouldn't be going any further than that. So three more times. So retracting the shoulders, extending through the arms, reach them long, lengthening from the top of the head when I can't go any further. Then reaching through the feet, locking through the thigh, and then squeezing with the back of the bone, the legs off into extension. And then I'm going to ease my way back. So see if I can keep the knees locked, see if I can keep the legs straight. Two more. Retracting the shoulders, depressing, reach through the arms, extending through the upper back as much as I can. And then locking through the feet, locking through the knees, squeezing with the back of the bum, both legs come up into extension. And then I'm going to ease my way back. Last time, retracting the shoulders, depressing, reaching through the arms, extending through the upper back, reaching long through the legs, locking through the knees, feel the thighs working, extending through the hips, feel the bum working, and then I'm going to release down. Giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll, pushing up onto hands and knees, I'm going to stretch up into cat. So just a few cat stretches to release any tension from the back of the shoulders, from the back. Four. Three. Two. Last one. And Release it back. Taking the legs around to the side, we bring them to the front. I'm going to 
Set myself up into a seated position. I'm going to tuck the band around my feet, making sure that it's nice and flat against the feet, so there is no way that it's going to snap or come off. And then I'm going to hold it roughly by the side of the calves. I'm going to keep the knees bent. Think of the thighs are staying loose this time. I want the legs to stay relaxed. And then I want the back to go into flexion, especially your lumbar spine. So I'm going to tilt the pelvis back. So I'm going to tap the pelvis under, scoop the belly in tight, and then using the arms to help me support that flexion, I'm going to rock my way back. Or think of a rocking chair. So see if you can think of the shape of that rocking chair. I'm just going to go about halfway. So I can feel the back of the sacrum and the back of the pelvis are just about touching the floor. And then I'm going to ease my way back. Straightening up the back, I'm going to try again. Tilting the pelvis and scooping the belly in, scooping the belly up. I'm going to rock my way back. And then easing my way back up. So deciding how much help you need coming from the band. The closer I hold it to the feet, the easier it gets, as the band is giving me quite a lot of help pulling back. If I hold further away from the feet, it gets a little bit harder. As the band is suddenly getting longer, I get less help, but I've still got a little support here. So see if you can try and find the resistance that works for your body. Notice where the tension is. Do I feel tension on the feet? Why should I be feeling tension on the feet? It's a hip flexion, it's a hip extension, it's a lumbar flexion, it's a lumbar extension. So there shouldn't be tension on the feet. There shouldn't be tension on the neck, there shouldn't be tension on the jaw. There shouldn't be tension on the thighs. So the thighs should be relaxed. It's your hip flexion, it's your deep hip flexors, it's your psoas that is doing the work. It's the belly that is keeping the compression to hold the back into that flex position to hold you into that right rounded shape. So I'm happy here, I feel comfortable here. I don't need to change anything, I'm just going to stay here. If I feel that I can progress it a step more, then I'm going to see if I can add a little pull with the arm. So I'm going to tilt the pelvis, scooping from the belly, connect it through the center, I'm going to hold the halfway, I'm going to pull back with the left arm. Just a little pull and then I'm going to follow the arm as I'm pulling. Then I'm going to ease back, a little pull to the right, follow through, easing back, and then I'm going to roll my way back up. So see if I can get a little bit more activation through the obliques. So I'm going to roll back to the halfway. I'm going to pull with one arm, rotate one way, relaxing through the shoulders, so through the neck, come back. I'm going to pull with the other arm, rotating the other way, come back, and then I'm going to return up. As you add, if you're adding a little rotation, see if you can be aware of the effort to be on the side of the belly, so making sure that you don't feel it elsewhere. So it's not my leg locking and pulling, it's not my neck stiffening, it's, my, it's not my jaw clenching, it's the side of the belly creating a little pull, it's the obliques so rotating me to one side, rotating me the other, back to the centre, and then I'm going to make my way back up into sitting. Three more times. So rolling back. I'm going to pull back one way. Ease back to the centre. Pull back the other. Ease back to the centre. And then I'm going to roll my way back up to the top. Two more. Rolling back. Remember to breathe. Pulling one, shoulder down, the neck is loose, come back to centre, pulling the other way, back to centre, and then I'm going to ease my way back up. Last time, slow controlled movement, just making it as slow as controlled as you can, stronger compression at the front of the belly, I'm going to turn if I'm turning one way, come back, I'm going to turn if I'm turning the other way, come back, and then I'm just going to ease my way back. Breathing the tension from the band, lowering yourself all the way down. 
until you're resting on the back, extending the legs away, extending the arms away, stretching down the front of the belly, stretching down the front of the hips. Five, four, three, two, one, and release the back. Bring the arms back by the side, reaching forward into the arms, and lifting the chin to the chest, lifting the head, lifting the shoulders, strong to the centre, all the way back up to the top. Using the arms to help if I need. As you get to the top, finding a comfortable seated position. Um, session is finished. If you feel that you've got a little bit more time, there are lots of other videos you can source from. So just have a look through my channel and I'm sure you will find something else. Any question, any comments, please get in touch and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Till the next one, bye for now.